Hey Local 5, it's Dave. Uh, I promised you an update with uh, what's going on with Council. Got a few other things kind of going on uh, to discuss this morning. So I just want to, this may be a bit long, but um, it's fairly important. So as everybody has heard, we deferred the vote on Council um, until November, and there's a reason for that. When we were back in Seattle meeting with the campaign uh, guys from the IAFF, we kind of had some discussions about everything and wanted to make sure that we position ourselves in this most favorable position um, and strongly maintain the, the, the momentum that we have on, on this issue as we go forward. So with that, we need to understand that the original intent was for Council's involvement was to put it on the ballot issue. Neither Council nor us obviously understood at the time when we submitted that request for an agenda item to be developed um, that we couldn't actually do that without triggering the special election. So city attorneys came back, advised council that they couldn't. Um, we decided to go ahead and pursue it as a resolution as at the request of some of the members of council that were favorable to the position to see that kind of initially set in stone for our, our intent to come back later and, and develop that um, agenda item as a ballot issue, issue after the uh, November election. Thank you, Docs. Appreciate the background noise. Um, so, in the discussions with our um, campaign folks from the international, they really were like, if we couldn't, if we couldn't uh, really make an impact with the resolution, why push anything forward and create some div divisiveness and um, some misunderstanding potentially between the pressure on the, on the council members who don't have their constituents fully educated as far as what this actually means. So. The good thing is that even though it's kind of a half-step misstep, because again, our intent was to get a, a ballot initiative, it ended up being a resolution based on city charter and law, that we couldn't get it before the November election without for April, before the November election, without it becoming involved in the November election, and we definitely want the, the, it on the municipal election in April. So we had to step back from that and, uh, and defer, so we will be bringing an initiative before Council in November. We're still going to move forward in our, in our signature gathering, and we're going to actually develop separate language than what Council would have had, um, and there's pros and cons to that, and, and to that it's going to be, um, instead of Council's involvement, it would be to a vote of the people. This is going to actually be a great position for us in November because it's going to, sh it's going to have, we're going to have options with this. And so we're going to look at what's in the best interest and also uh, gain either the support of council or to be able to establish our own initiative. And so the options that we're going to have are actually going to give us a better position in the end. So in all, this actually works out to our favor. Um, if you have any specific questions about exactly which either one of those um, ballot initiatives look like as far as a collective bargaining agreement, how the resolution would either come to an imp from an impasse uh, from an arbitrator, to a vote of the people or to council, don't hesitate to give myself or John Roy a call and we can clearly uh, describe that for you. But all that being said, we definitely appreciate everybody's um, intent on coming out on Tuesday. But again, just to base the direction on um, what's going on with, with that ballot initiative and the legality of the city charter and so forth, it kind of um, ended up being better in our best interest at this moment to defer it to the November ballot and have council vote on it when it would actually count for our original intent which to get it to, to be placed on the ballot. So I know that's kind of rambling and hopefully that made sense um, but the fact is is that we're really in a good position on that. Being Also being said, um, we've got a couple other issues or a couple of items I'm sorry coming up, one of them pretty quick, uh, one in four days actually. So we've got a local five ale that's going to be developed this year. Um, and the uh, brewing for that's on the 20th of August and the canning's on the 31st with a uh, kickoff date to follow on that. I want everybody to understand exactly what this is. Local file ale with um, the, uh, the, uh, the brewer that does that for us is a tremendous support in our uh, fundraising for our multiple line of duty debt that we're able to send people out on and fund those costs. As you know, those sometimes are extremely high because of the short notice of uh, getting a couple people airplane tickets, reservations in hotels, sometimes in, in venues that um, are incredibly stressed based on the fact that a large number of firefighters are coming into town. So those costs are always not cheap. And to that point, we need to always make sure that we have enough available funds 
uh, for our local to be able to send those folks to obviously support the multiple line of duty desk, given the fact that we're actually the host for the fallen firefighter memorial. This initiates that process um, just to make sure we get good contacts and, and develop those relationships to make sure that the families are taking care of our fallen brothers and sisters. So August 20th, um, it's a blast. Come out if you've never done it before. Meet some new people, uh, especially the youngsters. Uh, reach across some of the shifts. It's amazing how many people you don't actually know on the job. So come out, have an opportunity uh, to to get with some brothers and sisters to help kick this off, to really help develop this fundraising effort. Um, I think it's Pikes Peak Brewing. Well, is going to kill me if that's not right. Um, but touch base with Jesse. August 20th, like I said, is the, the, the brewing on it. 31st is the canning. And then there'll be a kickoff party up at their event, up at Monument um, for that shortly following. We'll definitely advise on that. Um, so please consider uh, some folks kind of getting out and, and, and making that happen. We've obviously got the Fall Firefighter Memorial coming. We had um, Techscape last night. And you got to admit, that's some great stuff. And it is due to a technical difficulty. We have in the past sent out multiple texts like that that basically come across everybody's phone as an individual text. And we don't get that, that multiple um, response. It was kind of funny. I was talking to my wife last night. It's my phone first lit up. And I told her, I said, it's going to be 15, 20 texts. And it's going to go firefighter-ish. And it was. And... Um, some of you guys are some pretty creative individuals, and I appreciate that. Some folks maybe walk that thin, fine line of that being reasonable, as we ended up having, obviously, chiefs involved in that as well. So um, sometimes we should kind of take that into consideration before we reply. That being said, the importance of this issue and the event that it represents and the fact that we're going to have a huge year this year, I think we're at right at – or just below 270. It's one of the biggest years that we've had outside of representing the year following 9-11. Um, so there's there's two venues, uh, a whole bunch of new dynamics this year. So we're going to really need to have a commitment by our membership to get out and really support this event. So please, you know what I mean? The whole, the whole axiom and the fact that the more people that throw in, the less work it is for everybody is really, really true here. If you can get out, do a four or six hour stint, Again, kind of like with brewing. It's just like uh, the brewing stuff as far as kickoff on that. Get out, spend some time, meet some new people. I'm telling you, if you get out and drive, uh, you work the airport. Um, <laughs> sorry. When you meet the families, the people that are coming in. And uh, sorry, I don't have enough time to redo this, so you can just have to, the old man's a blubbering baby. To meet the families of the people that are coming in. Um, to, mem to memorialize their fallen. It's an incredible, incredible thing. And I promise you that if you've never done it before, you come out to spend a short, short amount of time supporting this effort, you'll come back because it's impressive. This is something that just represents exactly what this local and what this union means. Which is we stand together in solidarity. We take care of each other from the beginning and then unfortunately sometimes to the very end. But we want to make sure that those that have given the ultimate sacrifice are taken care of and memorialized um, in right standing. So it's an incredible, impressive time, um, and it's a really, it's it'll touch your heart. It's really awesome. And those that, that have made that commitment in the past, they know I, they know what I'm talking about, and that's the reason why they continue to come out and support this great event because it really does make an impact, and it's so important for our locals. We are the host uh, for that fall firefighter memorial to to really make sure that we we have a a, a really well supported event. So take that as it is. Um, I appreciate your time this morning, and I hope you guys have a blessed day, and hopefully all this made sense. I don't know if I've had enough coffee yet this morning that it came through, but um, if you have any questions, as always, don't ever hesitate to give myself or anybody on the executive board a call for clarification on anything, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.